These are tests that I ran that GPT-4 failed on. I asked, tell me about what this dog is wearing. And it, it said it was wearing a sweater, but it didn't pick up on, on the GitHub logo. What you're seeing now is the beginning of the chat. You upload an image and ask, tell me about this photo. The new free version of ChatGPT includes the memory function. Mm -hmm. When you're using ChatGPT, ChatGPT will pick information out of what you're saying and put it into a notebook it has with information about you. And then it'll casually draw from that memory in its responses. And the only way you know that's happening is as it's responding, you may see a little indicator that says accessing memory. And then once it's done, it'll go away. This is not transparent. When you're using the system, you don't, unless you're aware that's happening, you're not necessarily aware of it. As you're interacting with the model, it may accrue a lot of information about you and then reflect that information back at you, which makes you feel like the system is much smarter than it really is. As we move forward into this new reality, it's very important for people to be aware that this memory feature is there, that it's on automatically, that you can edit it and also that you can feed into it. When you're doing this, you can also say, commit this to memory, and it'll put it into the memory. But you need you to constantly go like, check your memory. So I'll just say something like, remember that I love GitHub. See, it says now memory updated, and it told me, hey, Ray loves GitHub. When I go to manage memory, there's all kinds of stuff yeah. in here that I never told it to remember. I guess I was at some point looking at Matt Harrison's like sort of information, and it picked up this email address. I don't want it to remember that. This is a perfect example because yeah. you didn't put that in, the system remember it, and there is a non-zero chance that at some point you would be using the system and it would randomly surface this, right? Because it seemed relevant to the machine. This is part of what happens when these tools evolve is that you get a lot of these bolt-on features that may behave in ways that are unexpected, where it's not clear what's happening or where that information comes from. We as users need to be super aware of how the system works and what it's actually doing so that we're not getting fooled into thinking that it's somehow magically aware of who we are or what we're doing, or is able to almost have like precognition to guess at where we're going with things. I want to show you where I actually told it the information about my dog. This is another photo of my dog that I had fed to GPT-4, and this is him wearing a sweater that my daughter knit it. It says Mojo and Binary. But notice that mm -hmm. you can't see the entire number just because of his curvature right? GPT-4 couldn't pick this up. Look at this. This image shows a blue-gray Boston Terrier wearing a red sweater with bi white binary code. The dog is sitting. The binary code appears to be decorative and adds a tech team touch. I'm not sure what it's doing here. Like it actually read the text somehow mm -hmm. from the photo and then it, it then translated the ASCII encoding. Then it said the binary code spells Mojo, which is the name of your dog. This is pretty interesting reasoning. I, I hate the word reasoning when we use it in rough reference to these things because it's not reasoning. It's well, math. The, the marketing team calls it reasoning. Our entire language around AI is anthropomorphized intentionally to like originally it was because it made it more understandable as mm -hmm. a metaphor, but now it's just a marketing ploy. This is a decision tree saying context here. We know that the thing is called Mojo. It's on the dog. There's connections between these two pieces of information. There's a bunch of things happening here. You can tell that you can't read the entire shirt. So how mm -hmm. did it pick up these last few numbers? Did it read most of the number and then it just guessed what the next number would be? It's binary. So 50-50, did it know that it was my mm -hmm. dog's name? I don't know what it's doing here and it's surprising. Worth further investigation. Right. <laughs> how did it do this? I want to know how yeah. technically it actually got to this point the horrible just, part is you actually will never know yeah right, right? <laughs> because we can't see what's happening because they're black boxes right in the original gpt4 query of vision i was trying to say maybe you just can't read the whole binary code maybe if i just flatten right. it out so i just said what does this say the knitted pattern spells out mojo the letters are formed using a contrasting color here's another one that i think you'll find very interesting and scary because uh, this is a photo of a brother-in-law's apartment in, in Panama. And I asked, okay, can you tell me where this was taken? This is another one where originally I did this and it told me where it was. Then I looked at the photo and there's a bunch of exit info. So it has the latitude and longitude. So I don't know if it is yeah. picking that up 
from the photo itself. Then I took a screenshot and I reinserted the photo. That's what this one is. Can you tell me where this was taken? So look at the reasoning. It's actually identifying exactly the right place. Before, yeah. I don't know if it was looking at the exif data. Usually when it's writing some Python code, it shows you that it's coding, right? It didn't seem to be doing that. So this is called Punta Paitilla in Panama. It's a, it's a pretty huge landmark. So the image provider is Panama City, Panama. Scala features number of high-rise buildings. Yeah, see, the specific view is likely from the Punta Pacific area. This is exactly right. This is scary also, <laughs> right? I'm willing to bet there's some landmark yeah component to this that's significant enough that it's able to pick up on it. If you're Panamanian, you you would be able to know what this is. The fact that this is really unique to that area in Panama, you have this beach with a black sand on it, and it's half of the time, depending on the level of the water, you can see a lot of empty sort of the water not reaching the, the coastline. So this you would know, Panamanian. ChatGPT, not Panamanian, I don't think. 